Good morning, everybody. In case we don't know each other, my name is Kenny, and I'm a pastor at the Village Church of Lincolnshire in Lake Forest, Illinois, and I am coming to you from snowy Vernon Hills, because that's what we do in northern Illinois. We snow in April. <laughs> well, all bitterness aside, I want to talk to you today about um, being ministered to by God before seeking to minister to others. You may have noticed in the, the cover video, or the cover photo for this video, I had a picture of masks on an airplane. And if you've ever flown on an airplane, you're probably familiar with the, the shtick that they give you every time. That if there's an emergency and the masks come down, the first thing you're supposed to do is put a mask on yourself before you try to help anyone else. Now, in the kind of ministry circles that I'm interacting with these days, that illustration gets brought up a lot, that you have to put your own mask on before you try to help other people. That is, you need to be ministered to by others and by God before you try to minister to other people. You need to be full, spiritually, physically, emotionally, in every, in every sense of the word, before you can try to pour into others. And as I was thinking about this this morning, I realized that that's not just a good word for pastors, it's a good word for all of us. All of us are finding uh, ourselves in, in opportunities or situations where we need to help other people, whether it's through a phone call or it's running errands, whatever. Uh, we want to be a blessing to the people around us. But we, especially if you're a driver like me and you want to get stuff done and you see needs and you want to take care of them, we're really good at doing but we're not so good at sitting still and receiving. And what happens is that you can get into kind of productivity mode or serving mode, and you don't realize that for the past few days, you've been running on empty. So thinking about all that this morning, it drove me to 2 Corinthians 1. And I want to read that for you now, just 2 Corinthians 1, verses 3 through 7. Talk a little bit about it, and then we'll pray. All right. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in our comfort. Now this, this passage is at the, the very beginning of 2 Corinthians and it's Paul sort of rehearsing, and he's getting ready to talk about the details of what this has looked like, but he's rehearsing the trials and tribulations that he and his fellow apostles have undergone in order to bring the gospel to the people. He's talking about the suffering they've endured, the suffering that they've endured as co-laborers with Christ, and they're talking about the suffering that the Corinthians will endure. And the thing that has struck me so much about this is... He's talking so much about God as the, as the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. And he has comforted Paul so that he might be a comfort to the people he's ministering to. I mean, get that, get that movement. Paul is comforted in his affliction so that he could comfort others in their affliction. It's the same kind of movement we see in 1 John, where he says that we are enabled to love one another only because God has loved us first. And the thing I want to say this morning before we go to prayer is take the time to let God minister to you before you try to minister to others. Take the time to let God comfort you before you try to dole comfort out to others. You can't pour water out of an empty jar. So it's a word for you as much as it is a word for me. Slow down. Sit. Allow God to speak peace to your soul 
before you try to speak peace to other souls. Otherwise, you'll find yourself running on en empty. You'll find yourself talking to someone and you just won't know what to say. You won't know what to offer them. Don't feel like you're being unproductive in that. Don't feel like you're being unhelpful in that. Sometimes the most helpful thing you can do for yourself and everyone around you is to just stop and to sit and to be with God. Let the dishes go unwashed. Let the living room sit untidied. Maybe even let your kids sit down in front of a video. Just like five minutes. It's okay. Let God minister to you today. Let God care for you. Let God comfort you before you try to care for and comfort others. Okay, we're going to pray now. Again, as I always do, I would encourage you to share any prayer requests you might have in the comment stream on this Facebook video, and I will pray for those in due course. All right, let's pray together. Blessed are you, our God and Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, you are the Father of all mercies and all comfort. We thank you, Lord, that as you draw near to us with your comfort, you don't stand far off, that you yourself are comfort. And as you come to us, you come to us. You throw your arms around us and you comfort us like a parent does their grieved child. Lord, we thank you that you do comfort us in our affliction that you give us strength and you give us peace, and that you love us so well, even when we're at our most unlovely. But we thank you, Lord, that that comfort doesn't stop with us, but you call us to participate with you in your movement toward others, that you meet us in our affliction, that you quiet our hearts, that you give us strength so that we can do the same for others. You encourage us so that we can be an encouragement. You bless us so that we can be a blessing. You comfort us so that we can be a comfort. So Lord, I pray for that today. Yes, I pray that you would move us toward others, but I, I pray even more so that you would move us toward you. That we would try that we would not try to care for others without first being cared for by you. That we would receive from you before we give. Help us to do that, Lord. Father, I thank you for my friends here. I thank you that they've been able to join this morning. That we're able to connect in this imperfect way. We thank you that you are the God of connection and the God of communication, the God of community, that you bind us together by your spirit and in your son. You'd think I'd turn my phone off before these things. Lord, thank you that you're with us in the awkwardness. Thank you that you're with each one of us wherever we are. Lord, uh, I lift up to you Evie's request for Derek Torres' mom as she is on a ventilator now. Ugh. I don't know the Torres, Lord, but you do. And I pray for them. I pray for uh, healing and protection for his mom and comfort for the family. Lord, you are bigger than this thing. You are stronger than this thing. You are the great physician. And I pray that you would receive glory in a wonderful act of healing. Ann Foreman reminds us and me not simply to lament the snow, but to praise you for its beauty. And that is true, Lord. Thank you that um, though some of us would prefer sunshine and warm weather right now, you still give us this beautiful snow. That you give kids something to go and play in something to enjoy other than the same old toys and all that at home. Lord, we pray for our communities around us, not just our church, Lord, 
but the friends and neighbors we know who uh, don't belong to you, who may not have had much interest in you before all this started to go down. We pray, Lord, that you would give us occasion and opportunity to share the hope of the gospel with them. I pray that our friends would bring us their fears. I pray that they would see in us the comfort that you have given, and that even if they don't know why, even if they can't explain why, they would come to us for a little bit of that comfort. Lord, would you make us watchful for those opportunities, and would you make us bold to embrace them? Lord, as we've often prayed, and we will continue to pray, we want to see revival. This is a massive upheaval in our culture in so many ways, and people are asking so many questions, and they're going so many places to try and get a handle on this, to find some truth, something that they can hold on to. May they come to you. May they come to us as your ministers of reconciliation. Help us to be bold to speak your truth to them and to love them with our words and to point them to the only Savior who can give them the comfort and the peace and the assurance that they are, they are looking for right now. We thank you that you are with us, Lord, that there is no trial in our lives, individually and collectively, that does not come to us without going through your hands first. We thank you that you are sovereign, that you are in control, that even if we can't see it, you mean this for our good because you love us and you're working all things together for the good of those who are called according to your purpose. So help us, Lord, to be ever mindful of that, to be still when we need to be still and to listen for the whisper of your Holy Spirit and to be attentive to the fact that even in this, you are fashioning us in the shape of your Son. Lord, we long for that. Make us more like Jesus. Enable us to see our world through his eyes and to love our neighbors through his heart. I thank you again, Lord, for these friends that, been that have been able to join me this morning. I pray for them wherever they are, and I commend them to your care. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you all for joining me this morning. Uh, I will be back on Monday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, if you're looking for a way to worship this Sunday morning, you could go to our website. I will include a link in the comments here. We've been creating liturgies for home worship every Sunday, which just include readings and songs and prayers uh, and a, a sermon video to help you worship at home individually or with your families. And we pray soon with small groups. So God bless you. I pray that you would have a wonderful weekend and that in everything you would draw near to him as he draws near to you. Bye-bye.